Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed or overthinking person in your mid-30s, your 40s, your mid-50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky here. Welcome to episode 56 of the Career Change Podcast. Let's talk about the advantage of of starting a business, of starting your own business after 40. What I really want to do in this particular episode, I want to bust the myth that entrepreneurship or starting your own business is a young person's game. Now, for many of my clients and many of my listeners, it's obvious that they want to start a business. However, there is also a number of you listening who might, and I know this because you're telling me, there are also a number of you who don't think that starting a business is for you. You might feel like you are not the entrepreneurial type. You might not even allow yourself to consider it as an option. Or maybe you feel intimidated by it. I know this because I'm getting a lot of emails about this. People are telling me this. So this episode is for you. Now, often you feel like this because you've bought into outdated, untrue myths about career change, age, or business that just aren't true. And that, my friend, my dear listener, is something I care deeply about helping you change. So if you are listening right now and you are worried, you think you're too old or not hip enough or confident enough, entrepreneurial enough to start your own business, this particular episode is for you. But it's really for everyone. So listen in. You might be surprised by what you learn here. Now, there are so many advantages to starting a business after 40 or after 35 or after 50. But this particular podcast, as you know, is aimed at those of us over 35. And the great thing about starting your own business is that it is also a fantastic vehicle for changing careers, for moving into a new field. But What we'll talk about in this episode, and which is one of the biggest advantages when it comes to starting your own business, is actually your age itself. Yep, you heard that right. Research shows that the most successful businesses, the most successful startups are started by people over 40. Let me say that again. Research shows the most successful businesses, the most successful startups are started by people over 40. And surprisingly, this is particularly the case when it comes to high growth companies, which is kind of the opposite to what the media loves to tell you, right? So we'll talk about uh, some studies in a moment, but let's just define a problem up front in case this is your problem as well, something you can relate to. So I want to share with you an email that I got that really defines this problem really well. And maybe you see yourself reflected in this whole idea of the myth of an entrepreneurship being a young person's game. And this is a a listener question from Oliver, who works in a law firm on the East Coast of the US. Now, remember, this podcast, um, the Career Change podcast, is all based on the most frequently asked questions that I get from you, my listeners. So if you want to submit your question to you, make sure you're on my mailing list over at thecareerchangepodcast.com and then let me know what you most want me to talk about. But here is the email from Oliver. Hi, Ricky. I would love to start my own business. But as someone who's been in the same profession, in my case law, since leaving university and who has just hit the big 4040, I worry that my age and career history will actually work against me. And that I left it too late, I'm too old to become a successful entrepreneur or business owner. And also that it's too risky at my age. Whenever I scroll Instagram or listen to popular podcasts or consume media, it seems like the most successful founders are all in their 20s or early 30s. And they're way more confident in the know and interesting read cool (laughs) than me. It appears that that world is a hip young person's game. 
I feel totally deflated and intimidated after such a scrolling session and end up talking myself out of my business dream, thinking that I left it too late, I'm not the entrepreneurial type, and I should just be grateful to have a job that pays the bills. Please help, Oliver. So Oliver and everyone else who feels like this and who's listening right now, I got you. This type of email makes me both very sad and also very angry. And like, I really feel like, okay, let me sit you down and tell you something here. Because what you're doing is you're buying into a myth that is perpetuated by the media, by social media. This thing that entrepreneurship is a young person, a young hip person's game. Because, and, and that is just not true. But one of the things that also make me feel really sad is that look what buying into this belief is doing to Oliver. It is also doing this to him that it therefore makes him, as he says, keep, he keeps talking himself out of his entrepreneurial dreams because of it. And that's really the cost that you are paying if you're buying into this myth. It is literally that you might have heard this me say this in another podcast episode. Your head will literally turn into a slaughterhouse of dreams. All of those dreams you got about running your own business, starting a business, you know, to, to help you escape from that job you hate, for that career you hate, you're just, you just keep killing them, killing them off because you think, well, you're too old, you left it too late, it's not realistic, all of this and that. That makes me really sad because it is absolutely not too late. As a matter of fact, this is the best time for you to start a business. The numbers, they show it. And also, Oliver is only 40. If you listen to my last podcast, episode 55, we are now talking about, we're going to have to work you know, all careers, we're talking about all careers now being 50 or 60 years long, and that's just going to increase. And Oliver is less than 20 years out of university. So he might not even be halfway through his career. Can you imagine staying stuck in that career you hate for 20, 30 more years? What would that do to you? And meanwhile, you're just sitting there getting really depressed about that, really upset about that. And not just that, but you're also killing off all of those dreams and just cutting off all these great opportunities. I do not want that to be the case for you. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that everyone should start their own business or that it's the only right way to change careers. My clients are split into both camps. You know, they do a variety of things. But what I am really, what I really want to get across in this episode is I do honestly think, and this is something I increasingly see being the case and being the most, actually the the more feasible career change option after 40, I do suggest that you should at least consider it as a viable option. And we're talking all kinds of businesses. I'm not talking about you starting the next Facebook. That's not what we're talking about. It's all kinds of businesses. I really want to consider it as a real viable, fantastic option for you too after 40. And that's really because, and again, I've been in this field for 20 years, um, almost two decades, you know, helping people change careers and also start businesses, especially after 35, after 40. And here's what I can tell you. Starting your own company, especially after 40, is one of the best vehicles for changing careers after 40, especially also if you're facing a lot of gatekeepers in the arena you want to move into now if you were to go the employee route. And also what's great about starting your own business, it also gives you the opportunity to hire or collaborate with others to cover for gaps that you might have at the moment as you're transitioning into something new. So starting your own business at the fantastic, perfect age of after 40 is such a great vehicle for changing careers, which is why I really want you to consider it. But it is also a great vehicle if you want to overcome or avoid institutionalized ageism in the hiring process, in the firing process. So here's what I really want you to know. Right now, if you think you're too old, you're not the type to become an entrepreneur, then not only are you buying into an entrepreneurial myths, that's actually not true, but you are also discounting one or or completely not, you know, embracing one of the best vehicles for facilitating your career change. And that vehicle is starting your own business. You know, entrepreneurship is such a fantastic way to also bypass gatekeepers and for overcoming and fighting ageism. Okay. But the key point I really want to make here in this episode is that the most successful businesses are actually started by people over 40. 
And that's particularly the case when we're talking about high growth companies. Who would have known? So in this episode, I really want to focus on and bust the myth that entrepreneurship is a young person's game. Now, just before we we go into the paper that I really want to share with you, the academic paper that's just fantastic, I just want to mention something. In addition to the age issue, when people are worried that they left it too late to start their own business, I also often hear otherwise very smart and aspiring career changers, you know, people over 35, shy away from starting their own company or doing their own thing because they say things like, well, I'm I'm not like Mark Zuckerberg or I'm not like the entrepreneurial type or I'm not like Elon Musk. If that is your problem, then I also suggest that you listen to episode 33, which is called How to Find Business Ideas When You Are Not Steve Jobs, for more about that. But again, in this episode, I really want to focus on age because, again, you might have this idea that starting your own company is mainly for those hip young kids, beautiful influencers, or young people in the know half your age, and nothing could be further from the truth. So let's talk about a really fantastic paper that was an enjoyable read and that I really want to share with you. So this is from a 2019 paper called Age and High Growth Entrepreneurship. And it's literally one of the most in-depth studies on the relationship between age and startup success. And it was conducted by researchers from MIT, Northwestern, Wharton, and also importantly, the US Census Bureau, you know, so they could actually get real administrative data. Fantastic collaboration. Now, a fun side note, when you actually read through this paper, I think one of the the things that really inspired the academics to undertake this kind of research was a comment made by Mark Zuckerberg at an event at Stanford University where he said, well, young people are just smarter. But actually, what they found in this paper, what that, that the researchers, they actually found that the mean age of startup founders across the U.S. was 42 years old. And the mean age of high-tech startup founders, where one might normally presume that founders were younger, was actually 43. And then get this. And the average age of founders of the ultra, you know, rare ultra growth unicorn, you know, the one in thousand fastest growing ventures was 45. So the higher the growth, the more successful the company, the older the founders actually were, the average age of them. Who'd have thought, right? That's pretty much exactly the opposite of what you read in the media or how it's portrayed or what you see when you go on social media. That is a fantastic piece of news for you, I hope. Here's a direct quote from that paper. And it says, Our primary finding is that successful entrepreneurs are middle-aged, not young. Taking numerous measures to identify potentially high growth firms, as well as studying ex post growth of each firm, we find no evidence to suggest that founders in their 20s are especially likely to succeed. Rather, all evidence points to founders being especially successful when starting businesses in middle age or beyond while young founders appear disadvantaged. So these findings really strongly reject common hypotheses that emphasize youth as a key trait of successful entrepreneurs. Fantastic, right? Actually, the the, the study shows that the likelihood of success actually just of a founder increases with age. Let me just say that again. The study actually shows the likelihood of success as a founder increases with age until the age of 60. How bloody fantastic is that? The older you get, the more likely your chances of success are when it comes to starting your own business. A 50, here's what the study shows, a 50-year-old founder is twice as likely to build a thriving enterprise that has either an IPO, initial public offering, you know, when you sell it to the public, or a successful acquisition as a 30-year-old founder. And also, 
even more important for, for us here. And you don't necessarily need practice as an entrepreneur to become one. Most successful founders have worked in corporate and other jobs before starting their venture. Whew. Let, let us just put a pin in that one. Did you hear that last thing? The most successful founders have worked in corporate and other jobs before starting their venture. Hey, does that background sound familiar? You know, most of the listeners and most of my clients of the Career Chain podcast, they are corporate professionals or they have had, you know, jobs where they worked in a field for a number of years. They are not born entrepreneurs. They're not people who had, you know, serial ventures by now. There are people who had a normal career. They went to university, then they went in and did a classic profession or took a number of jobs. So you, my friend, are in the perfect position in terms of age and background to get started. Isn't that just amazing to know that actually everything up until this point is conspiring to put you in the best position to start your own company now? So actually the fact, Oliver, and everyone else listening, that you now turned 40, or plus that, you know, 35, 40, 50, however you are listening to this, actually that is the perfect time for you to begin and you've got the perfect background. And also just think about that. Doesn't that just make a lot of sense? And also what I would say to you, so everything up until now has pretty much prepared you for this moment. And that's important to bear in mind because I know a lot of you, you have a real fear of, you know, this is something my clients, my listeners always say to me, oh, but Ricky, but I am so afraid that I'll be throwing it all away if I change careers and start my own business. No, you are not throwing it all away. The only thing you should be throwing away is getting rid of what no longer works for you. That job or profession or subject or manager or client group, whatever it is that you hate, that is what gets thrown away, right? Everything else you can keep and build on. And it's been the, it's almost been like the perfect warm-up band for that business, that career change you're going to make right now. So I really want you to reframe how you view career change after 40. It's not a matter of throwing it all away, but it's literally everything up until now has been the warm-up band for what you're going to do now. Now it's the time for the real show. Now you can make your experience work for you, your age work for you. You can focus on what you're good at, what you enjoy. You can finally start focusing on what you care deeply about, what's interesting to you, what you're passionate about, what you're curious about, what kind of problems you want to solve. Remember that people mentioned in these, um, this academic paper, they were not born entrepreneurs. You know, stop thinking that you have to be that. No, they were people who worked in corporate backgrounds in normal jobs to start yourself. But what they did, now they chose themselves. They chose, no, now I want to work for myself. I want to do my own thing. I want to start a company. And that's what I recommend that you consider as well. Please listen carefully. Don't underestimate the value or what you already have to offer at the age of, you know, 35, 40, 50 plus. And I know this can be really hard to see if right now you're in a job, you're in a career, you're a profession you hate. You know, Oliver did write me a little bit more of a longer email. He hates law, he hates all the toxicity, the long working hours, the clients, the subject, all of that. It can be really hard if you're in that kind of scenario to see what you already have to offer. What are the skills? What what are the things that are unique about you? What you're good at? What you should build on? That is a lot of the work that I do with my clients. There are a lot of ways. Everybody, I have never come across any client who didn't have a big, solid body of knowledge that they couldn't build on, that they could offer going forward. So you already have a phenomenal amount to offer. And it's important that you link it away. You know, you you sort of de dissociate that from just the one profession you've been working on. There is so much you can build on. Like I say, that's a lot of what I do with my clients. If you need help for that, come over to the careerchangepodcast.com and I can absolutely help you with that. But what I really want you to think about is, and this might be the missing piece for you, not only is age to your advantage now after 40, but also the very fact that you haven't been an entrepreneur before is, is the norm. It is, you know, you can use so much of what you already have. That is the key here. There's another um, paper I came across that was mentioned at my old university 
um, in a news in a, in a page in a paper by them, um, and it wasn't done by them. There was King's College. It was back at the end of last year, and there was a report that was done by Enterprise Nation in the UK. So Enterprise Nation is a is a business network in the UK, and there was a report that was called um, Access All Areas Older Workers, and it was about this thing about during the pandemic in the UK there was an exit of of what they call in the UK older workers, i.e. people over fifty who initially left and then they 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 came back uh, because they obviously needed the money. And this uh, paper was really encouraging those people to also consider entrepreneurship. And there's a great quote in that uh, report I want to share with you, in that paper that says, contrary to the popular image of business founders being go-getting 20-something, Enterprise Nation's most recent small business barometer found that the average age of the UK's business founders was 46 and that 35% of businesses are started and run by people over 50. These data show that age is no barrier to entrepreneurship and could be a viable option for older people looking to take part in the economy once again. And then it goes into explain. Um, why older people, I hate that they call us older people, I really do not feel old, but anyway, they go on to talking about why older people make ideal entrepreneurs. And there are really several reasons why older people may be well-suited to entrepreneurship. And perhaps the most obvious one is that they tend to come with a relative wealth of experience of the working world, even if they had gaps in their employment. So through this, that means they have both honed their general skills and also industry-specific knowledge. And that really puts them in a strong position to effectively manage a business and make a success to it. And then there's also closely related to this, like the reports talk about, is that many older people will already have built up close networks which they can draw on to increase the chances of the entrepreneurship seeing success. Networks are vital for entrepreneurs, whether in terms of having customers to sell to or investors to receive funding from, or when it comes to hiring talent or finding a business partner. Again, leveraging these ready-made relationships can significantly reduce the barriers to entry and increase the likelihood of success. Now, this, these are, to me, these are all obvious things. You would have heard talk, me, me talk about all of this before. You know, these are just so many other reasons why you want to consider starting your own business when it comes to changing careers instead of just finding a job. You are a steal. You know, you, are, you have so many things to build on. I often tell my clients about this. You know, first of all, you have human capital you know, you really have career capital, you have the knowledge, you have the skill, but the older you get, you also, the social networks, the networks that you have. And then also most, you know, people over 35, 40, they also have more financial capital than the younger generation. So you have, so the older you get, the, the more things you actually have got going for you because you've accumulated those. And because you're now starting your own business, you just leapfrog a lot of the barriers in terms of, you know, gatekeepers and discrimination and all of that, that, that can otherwise meet people at your age. So there are just so many things that you have to your advantage. Get excited. You have age on your side. So that's that myth busted. These findings strongly reject that myth that youth is a key trait if you want to be a successful entrepreneur. Actually, no, it is the other way round. I really want to address this also. You know, Oliver is sort of mentioning, oh, but it's also risky, you know, doing my own thing, leaving all of this behind. Let me tell you something. Risky is handing over power to someone else to fire you or hire you or decide if you can make a living or not. Being in charge and at least considering starting your own business gives you so many more options because rather than relying on one company, one person to pay you, you can go to a multitude of clients. So remember, as opposed to the myth of entrepreneurship being a young person's game, what the numbers actually shows is that starting a business when you are a bit more seasoned is way less risky because the success rate is so much higher. 
And think about it, often when you're 40 or 50 plus, the real risk potentially comes from you being laid off and potentially not being able to secure or find another job for a long time. So think about this, you right there, Oliver, sitting there in that job you think is safe. Maybe that is actually not that. It might actually be and probably is the riskier option. Because here's the thing, the older you are, the more pretend, because you are expensive to the company, the more risky it actually is for them to, to keep paying you. You know, you're more risky. It's, it's more likely that you might um, be made redundant because you have the expensive salary, the expensive, you know, benefits. And also, potentially, the older you are, the longer it might take you to find your next job. So risky is putting all of your eggs in just one basket, one job, one employer with all the power over you. That, to me, seems crazy and very risky. I'd rather have a ton of clients to choose from. So just think about this. At least, Oliver, at least consider starting your own business as one of your very, very viable options, okay? And all of you who've listened to the Career Change Podcast for a while, you know how much I love talking about starting your own business. And there are all kinds of businesses, whether that's a portfolio career, a you know business, whatever it is. And again and again, you know, my clients are over 35. They're in their mid-30s, mid-40s, mid-50s. And I see again, again, how midlife is the best time to finally do your own thing. Take what you are really good at, what you're really, you know, what you enjoy at that interest, at that passion and do it. Now, again, does that mean that I only recommend entrepreneurship? I only recommend portfolio careers? No, not necessarily. Though I do for the vast majority of my clients, but I recommend it in more situations than not. And again, I highly recommend that you at least consider it amongst your options. Optionality is important at midlife. And but most of all, with this episode, I really recommend that you challenge your assumptions about entrepreneurship. You know, next time you're feeling too old or not the type, Know that the numbers, your age is on your side and find more role models of your age to inspire you. There is, you know, generally the older we get, the more autonomy we tend to crave, the more flexibility, the more freedom. Optionality is what you have when you will consider doing your own thing. Okay, so many of my clients have used starting their own business to make massive changes, others just to make smaller changes and potentially just continue doing what you're doing. But as a portfolio career or as a consulting firm, there are so many different businesses that you can actually start. So remember, the most successful businesses are started by people over 40. What if you were to become one of them? All right. Now, if you want help, identifying or designing a business that can be the vehicle for your career change. I do have a program for that. I'm over at the careerchangepodcast.com. Come in and see me there and let me know if you need help. Now is really, you know, this is a time for you to get excited about what happens when you actually start being in charge of your career, in charge of your career change, which you can be when it comes to considering starting your own business as a real viable option. So, Middle age, not youth, is a superpower when it comes to entrepreneurship. Let me say that again. Being over 40, you know, middle age, not youth, is a superpower when it comes to entrepreneurship. So remind yourself of that next time you doom scroll or comparison scroll and then do this. Make it your mission to be a loud and proud role model, a real role model about what's possible after 35, after 40, after 50. I am right there with you get excited. I'll see you over at the careerchangepodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening. 